Let's look at other effects of pulsed microwave radio frequency radiation. True or false? Microwave workers experience heart problems. True. Studies on the health effects of microwave radiation go back decades, although some of the early studies were classified. In this symposium proceeding, published in 1969, the authors write, In the interest of occupational hygiene, many Soviet investigators and at least one U.S. researcher have recommended that cardiovascular abnormalities be used as screening criteria to exclude people from occupations involving radio frequency exposures. In other words, radio frequency radiation affects the heart, and scientists knew this 42 years ago. True or false, radiation from a 2.4 gigahertz cordless phone affects the heart. True. This was a double-blind study that was published in a peer-reviewed journal. Subject A was wearing a heart monitor and was exposed for three three-minute periods to radiation from a cordless phone or to sham exposure. The heart rate remained relatively constant, 58, 56, and 58 beats per minute. This subject was exposed during the second time interval, but did not respond to the provocation. Subject A is non-responsive. Subject B has a rapid heart rate during intervals 3 and 5, which coincide with exposure to the cordless phone. This subject experienced tachycardia, a rapid heart rate, and is highly responsive. Exposure was at less than 1% of Health Canada's Safety Code 6. True or false? Students are experiencing heart irregularities at school with Wi-Fi routers. True. Several students have visited their pediatric cardiologists and have worn heart monitors to school. Here are the symptoms they experience. Six-year-old girl, musical heart, headaches, dizziness, only at school. Twelve-year-old boy, tachycardia. Twelve-year-old girl, nausea, vomiting, no fever, insomnia, blurred vision, tachycardia, only at school. Thirteen-year-old boy, heart pounding, insomnia, headaches. He moved away and his symptoms have abated. World-famous cardiologist Dr. Stephen Sinatra explains what may be happening to these students. What these kids basically have is they have non-diagnostic tachycardia. Uh, Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome is a, it's, it's not uncommon, it's about 1 in 700 kids. Uh, so if you've got 50,000 kids in the stool district, I mean, do the math. You're going to have some kids with, this is an inborn situation where a child has an extra, what we call, electrical pathway in the heart. And uh, th these hearts can go uh, out of rhythm and uh, they can be triggered by situations that can disturb heart rate variability. And as a cardiologist, knowing what I know now, uh, it's easy for me to connect the dot that a child with Wolf Parkinson White, undiagnosed, exposed to Wi-Fi, could be triggered with an arrhythmia. Uh, Superventricular tachycardias are uh, what we call SVTs, and uh, adults and kids have these all the time. And uh, again, because uh, Wi-Fi disturbing uh, uh, heart rate variability, it could be a factor in children. True or false? 2.4 gigahertz affects the blood. True. This is what my blood looks like in a clean electromagnetic environment. Few cells are separate and a few cells are sticking together. This is what my blood looks like after I used a cordless phone for 10 minutes. My blood cells are sticking together. This is called Rouleau formation and shows an unhealthy condition. The consequences of Rouleau formation are reduced oxygen transport to cells and tissues and reduced waste removal. Symptoms may include headaches, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, numbness, tingling in extremities, dizziness, nausea, and weakness. These are the very same symptoms experienced by people who are electrically sensitive and by some students at Mountain View School as shown in the following video. True or false, students at school are getting sick with Wi-Fi. True. Hi, I'm Austin Lamond and I'm 14 years old. Uh, I'm, I go to Mountain View School. I've been suffering weird headaches and dizziness and displacement. like. It feels like my head is like there's a lot of pressure in my head and it's like repulsing like this and I just feel like displaced and when I'm not there if nothing happens so and like 
I get really like weak and, and like I can't, it's hard to hold a pencil too and I can't think straight. Starting this year at Mountain View, um, I've been getting a lot of headaches and it's been making me really dizzy and um, like it feels like like I can't concentrate and you feel like you're not really there. It's hard to explain. The thing that concerned us was that she always got better when she got home. And um, we couldn't figure out what was going on. We got our eyes checked and found out that wasn't it. And actually had everything checked and found out that wasn't it. And she still, to this day, when she goes to class, probably about, probably about four out of the five days that she's there, she's coming home with a, with a headache. And I mean significant headache where she has to take Tylenol or Advil. True or false? 2.4 gigahertz affects sperm. True. Studies with human sperm cells showed that sperm exposed to Wi-Fi radiation near a laptop computer were much slower and had DNA damage. The authors speculate that keeping the laptops in Wi-Fi mode on the lap near the testes may result in decreased male fertility. Does Wi-Fi affect female egg cells? We don't know, but if it does, exposure of one generation may have consequences on future generations. True or false? Microwave levels in schools are too low to have any effects. False. Dr. Tony Mook was asked by the Superintendent of Education to measure two schools in Ontario. The testing was completed in November 2010 and was released February 2011. This report concluded that all the observed levels are far below exposure limits currently established by proposed major international and national agencies or organizations for public, including children, or occupational exposure. These conclusions are wrong. On page 5 of the report for Mountain View School, one reading is 34% above Health Canada's Safety Code 6 guideline, which is 1 milliwatt per centimeter squared. The check guideline for pulsed radiation for 6 hours a day is 0.004 and is much lower than Health Canada's guideline. Our study with heart rate variability showed response at 0.003. 43% of the measurements in the school exceeded the values that caused heart problems in adults in our study. Disturbingly, this is the same school where students complained of heart palpitations and headaches. Here are results of radiation levels in classrooms, blue bars, as they are compared with radiation near cell phone antennas, red bars. In Ontario classroom, with no routers and no computer, the level of radiation was very low, 0.01 microwatts per centimeter squared. With one computer accessing the internet, radiation jumps to 12.5 units, and with one cell phone accessing the internet, it jumps to 40 units. In a classroom with one router, radiation levels are much higher, even though no computer is accessing the internet. In a Vermont school, the levels of radiation were almost the same as the levels 100 meters from a cell phone tower. Levels near the laptop and near the routers were even higher. Several studies have documented adverse health effects experienced by people who live near cell towers. Here are a few that provide exposure levels. Here are the levels at which people experience symptoms of electro-hypersensitivity. Cancer problems with the immune system, problems with their nervous system, and reduced sperm count. Yet we are told that levels in the classroom are too low to have any adverse effects and that the guidelines are protecting us. Cell phone antennas should not be placed near schools and Wi-Fi routers should not be placed inside schools. So what are the options? The worst option is the one that most schools are using, Wi-Fi everywhere, always on. This is the high-tech and low-intelligence option. A better option is the modified Wi-Fi. Here schools limit the location and the time of use and adjust behavior. The best option is a wired connection, which is both high-tech and high-intelligence. The Parliamentary Assembly Council of Europe agrees. In their resolution 1815 on the potential dangers of electromagnetic fields and their effects on the environment, they recommend 
For children in general, and particularly in schools and classrooms, give preference to wired internet connections and strictly regulate the use of mobile phones by school children on school premises. There are five wired alternatives to wire. There are three wired alternatives to wireless. Ethernet, which many schools already have, so their Wi-Fi system is redundant. Fiber optics, which is perhaps the best option, but makes sense only if there is fiber optics in the community. Otherwise, it's too expensive for most schools to afford. The third option is the power line adapter. Several makes are available. Basically, you purchase two adapters. One connects to the router, the other to the computer. Both have an Ethernet port and both are plugged into an electrical outlet. These adapters convert the wiring in a building to an Ethernet connection. Each computer needs its own power line adapter. This method is faster than Wi-Fi, more secure, more energy efficient, less expensive, and best of all, it does not emit microwave radiation. Wi-Fi radiation is not safe. It promotes tumors and rats. It affects sperm motility and viability. It causes DNA damage. It causes rouleau formation of the blood. It, it contributes to headaches, dizziness, nausea, weakness, and concentration problems. It causes arrhythmia and tachycardia. It damages the heart. It may cause heart irregularities in as many as 1 in 700 students. If half an hour a day exposure to cell phones contributes to brain tumors, can we be so sure that six hours of exposure to Wi-Fi in schools is safe? How much confidence do we have in the system when exposure exceeded guidelines in one school where the students are complaining of headaches and heart problems and nothing has been done about it? In the end, can we afford to make mistakes? If you care about the health of students and teachers, share this video. And if you have Wi-Fi at home, consider replacing it with a wired connection. Ask your neighbors to do the same. Thank you.